Today we're taking a look at Iraqi Dolma, a dish that has quickly become one of my favourite meals in this past year. Dolma is a big feature of Middle Eastern cuisine and is cooked in nearly every country that was part of the Ottoman Empire. It's basically vegetables stuffed with a mixture of rice, herbs and sometimes meat that makes for a really satisfying meal. Every country has its own recipe for dolma, and what makes Iraqi dolma so good is the unique sour and tangy flavour it has. Hey everyone, I'm Obi, a home cook who wants to get you cooking authentic and delicious Middle Eastern food at home. Dolma to me is a perfect winter food. Few dishes are more comforting than steaming veggies filled with herby rice. Now while there are dozens of different dolma recipes in the Middle East, this one has a unique tangy flavour that makes it insanely delicious. First, I'll show you how to prepare an array of different vegetables and make the dolma stuffing. Then we'll put together a blend of tangy and sour ingredients that make this dolma recipe tangang approved. Now, let's jump right in and make it. Let's first start off by discussing vegetable choice for this dish. You can make dolma with pretty much any vegetable that can either be hollowed out or rolled up. There's also dolma made from meat, fruit or seafood, but that's a topic for another day. For this video, I'll be using a selection of different vegetables and leaves so we can cover all of the basics. First up, we have miniature aubergines and courgettes. These are a classic of the dolma scene and one of my favourites. They're perfect for warming winter meals. Then we've got the classic stuffed pepper. These have transcended Middle Eastern cuisine and are cooked all around the world now. They make for a great portion size and nice presentation. Next up is onions, and believe me when I say onion dolma is one of the greatest things you'll ever eat. They're sweet and savoury, making for a delicious mouthful of food. Finally, we have some leaves of Swiss chard. While this is a new one for me, you can use vine leaves or cabbage in its place, and surprisingly this turned out really nice. If you're making this recipe, I'd recommend getting a varied selection of these, and possibly some miniature courgettes or tomatoes. Now I mentioned that Iraqi dolma is different because it tastes tangy, and the secret to its delicious tang is putting together three amazing ingredients. The first one is pomegranate molasses, which as you probably know has a sweet and sour flavour profile with a lot of bright notes. The second one is tamarind, and this is technically a legume which has a really pleasing tangy flavour similar to sour gummy sweets. The third one is black limes, and these are limes which are sun-dried until their flavour has really concentrated. When all three are used together, we'll get an extremely pleasing sweet, sour and tangy flavour that will blow your mind. If you are missing the black limes or tamarind, feel free to increase your pomegranate molasses by a bit. Let's move on to preparing the vegetables, starting with the aubergines. The objective here is to hollow the aubergine out so we can refill it with rice. Start by taking the top off, leaving as much of the aubergine as you can. Then you'll need to use this tool called a vegetable corer to separate the inner flesh of the aubergine from the walls. Insert it through the top of your aubergine going as deep as you can and trying your best not to poke it through the walls. Once you've reached the end, pull it out and rotate the aubergine slightly and then do it again. Repeat that a couple more times until you have formed a complete circle. Then all you need to do is rotate the cora around that circle a few times and a cylinder of aubergine flesh should pop right out. Clean up any small bits that didn't come out and you'll be left with a hollow aubergine. This is pretty much exactly what you want. A nice and clean aubergine ready to be stuffed. You'd use the exact same technique if you're going to be stuffing miniature courgettes. Now just place the removed aubergine core in a bowl and set it aside so we can use it in the stuffing. Next up we'll prepare some green peppers. These are pretty simple to do, just use a knife to split the top of the pepper from the base. You don't want to go all the way through to the other side though, as we want to keep the top attached to the rest of the pepper. I cut it about 90% of the way, and you can see the opening is just big enough to remove the core while the top is still attached to the rest of the pepper. Use your fingers or a knife to pull out the core of the pepper and throw it away. I'd also recommend removing as much of the white pith as you can, because it can have a bitter taste. Then you're left with a hollow pepper, perfect for stuffing and with the top still attached. Next it's the tomatoes, and you want to get ones that are quite firm, otherwise they are a nightmare to cook. These weren't optimal, and you'll see how they ended up exploding when cooked. Just like the peppers, we're going to do a single cut, set back from the top slightly about 90% of the way through the tomato, so that the top is still attached. 
If you want to do it the easy way, you can just slice right through it and then place the top back on once stuffed. Once you've exposed the inside, use a spoon or teaspoon to separate the core of the tomato from the walls. There's usually two or three points where it connects, and once you go through those, it should just scoop right out. I'd recommend cleaning out any extra seeds or liquid that's still in there, and then your tomatoes are ready to be stuffed. The onions are probably the simplest ones to do. Just peel them and remove the top and bottom. Then using a knife, slice halfway through the onion. The goal here is to cut through each layer of the onion a single time. Once you've done that, place your onion in the microwave on high heat for 2 minutes until it has split open. You can also do this by boiling the onion in hot water for a few minutes. Once your onion comes out of the microwave, it should look something like this. Be careful with it, it will be scalding hot, so let it rest for at least 5 minutes before handling. When it's cooled, you can peel back the layers and each one will be used to make a single onion dolma. The filling will be placed on the onion layer and then it gets wrapped around itself until it looks like an onion once more. The last vegetables we'll be using, which technically aren't even vegetables, are Swiss chard and grapevine leaves. To prepare these, all you need to do is dunk each leaf in boiling water for about 90 seconds until it has softened and wilted. You can put multiple vine leaves in at the same time, and then you remove everything and pat it dry. I'm using jarred vine leaves because they aren't in season, and each leaf will make a single dolma, whereas the Swiss chard will make about 2-3 rolls per leaf. If you want, you can use cabbage here instead. So with the vegetables hollowed out, we can start preparing our stuffing. I've already shown you how to make a dolma stuffing in one of my first videos, which I did the Egyptian way. Check it out if you want to know the main differences between Egyptian and Iraqi dolma. This Iraqi stuffing has a few additional ingredients, and we'll start with the black limes, which we're going to pulverise into a fine powder. I recommend doing a single lime, otherwise you'll end up with more powder than you need for this recipe. When yours looks something like this, it's ready to be used. Apart from the limes, we'll also need to do some work to get the tamarind into a usable state. If you have a block of tamarind like me, place 75 grams or 2.6 ounces in a bowl and pour over half of a cup of boiling water. Mix the tamarind and water together a bit and then let it sit for about an hour until the tamarind dissolves completely into the water. When the hour is up, strain out any seeds or pulp and the tamarind is ready to be used. I'll leave the conversion to tamarind paste in the description box in case you find it easier to use that. With that out of the way, we can prepare the rest of the stuffing ingredients. First, you'll need one cup of finely minced parsley. I'd recommend chopping off the larger stalks from the parsley before mincing it very finely. Yours should look something like this when done. You'll also do the same thing for some dill, which you'll need half of a cup of. It should look like this once you're done mincing. Next, you'll need to dice two medium onions into a small dice. I'd recommend using a mandolin if you have one to get the pieces really small. Finally, you'll take the tomato and aubergine cores and mince them really finely until they're about the same size as the onion pieces. With all of that done, we can actually make the stuffing, and I'm starting with 1.5 cups of washed basmati rice in a large mixing bowl. I'm working with double the amount here, so don't worry if yours looks a little different. To the rice, I am adding in 250 grams or 8 and 3 quarter ounces of minced beef. It's traditional to use meat in Iraqi dolma, but if you want to make this vegan, you can substitute it with any vegetable or meat substitute. Then add in the finely minced vegetable cores, the finely diced onions, the chopped parsley, the minced dill, 3 minced cloves of garlic, 3 tablespoons of tomato paste, half of the tamarind liquid, and a quarter cup of pomegranate molasses. For seasoning, add in one tablespoon of sumac, half of a teaspoon of black pepper, half of a teaspoon of ground black lemon powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of boharat or seven spice, half of a teaspoon of paprika, half of a teaspoon of dried coriander, and three teaspoons of salt. The final ingredient that we'll add to the stuffing is two tablespoons of olive oil. Now all you need to do is mix everything together very thoroughly. It will take a few minutes until the mixture becomes workable and uniform, but just keep mixing it and folding the ingredients from the bottom of the bowl to the top. 
After a few minutes, it should be well and evenly mixed, and you should have something that looks like this. At this point, your stuffing is ready to be used. I started off by filling the aubergines, and you'll need about 10 of these small aubergines for this recipe. To stuff them, you basically just push the filling in through the opening, getting it as far back as you can. Fill each aubergine up until about half a centimetre or a quarter of an inch from the top, and just be sure not to compact it too much. That gap will leave enough space for the rice to expand as it cooks. For the peppers, you pretty much just grab a small handful of the stuffing and place it in. Once again, leave a small gap at the top. I used four small Dolma peppers for this recipe, but you can use two larger bell peppers instead. One thing I forgot to do is to poke small holes into the aubergines and peppers with a knife for the glaze to get inside them. The tomatoes get stuffed the same as the peppers, except here you should leave a gap of at least three quarters of a centimeter or five sixteenths of an inch. I used three tomatoes and forgot to do that, so they exploded when cooking, which was not a pretty sight. To fill the onions, take a layer of the onion and place about 1-2 to two teaspoons of filling in it. Then you roll it up tightly into itself until the onion has been wound around the filling at least twice, and it looks something like this. For the smaller layers of onion, you can wrap a larger piece around the smaller ones. I used 3 onions in my dolma and wound up with about 15 pieces. For the Swiss chard, I sliced each leaf in half and trimmed off the thick part of the stalk. Then I placed about 2 teaspoons of filling at the middle bottom edge of my leaf and rolled it upwards. First I fold the bottom edge up to the filling and then tuck in the sides. After that you have to roll the bottom of the leaf towards the other end, tucking the edges in as you go. Keep tucking them in to get a nice and tidy roll. This is what yours should look like when done. For the vine leaves, I removed the stem first, then it was pretty much the same thing. Tuck the sides in and keep them tucked while you roll from the bottom to the top. One important thing to remember here is to lay your leaf with the veiny side facing up so that it gets rolled into the inside of the dolma. If you find any holes in your leaves, you can just lay another piece of the leaf over the hole before rolling it up and it will turn out fine. In total, I used about 15 vine leaves for this and 5 Swiss chard leaves. Here's what that all looked like. With all of the vegetables stuffed, we can go ahead with finally assembling our pot. To stop the dolma from sticking to the bottom of the pot, I've sliced a couple of potatoes into slices about 1cm or 3 8 of an inch thick. I then placed those so that they are lining the bottom of a tall walled pot and filled in any large gaps. If you want to, you could use lamb chops in place of the potatoes for a delicious result. You can then place your vegetables in the pot in pretty much any order. I'd recommend placing the onions at the bottom so that they can caramelise a bit better. Once the layer of onions was in place, I added the aubergines on top of them. Then I placed the peppers and tomatoes on top of the aubergines. Finally, I capped it all off with the vine leaf and Swiss chard rolls. Then the pot of dolma was ready for the stove. We're finally in the home stretch, and to cook the dolma, we'll place the pot on the stove on medium heat. Cover the pot with a tight fitting lid and let it sit for 15 minutes so that the vegetables can wilt and release their liquids. While that's sitting, we'll take one cup of vegetable or beef stock and add the remaining tamarind liquid to it to make the tangy glaze. You also need to add two tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter of a cup of pomegranate molasses, one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste, half of a teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. Mix it all together very thoroughly until the tomato paste has dissolved, and there you have the tangy dolma glaze. When the 15 minutes are up, open up the pot and you should hear it boiling quite vigorously. Take the tangy glaze and start pouring it out evenly over your dolma and around the edge of the pot. You won't need to pour it all. Try and look down the sides of the pot and stop once that you can see the liquid is about halfway up. Let the pot come to a boil and then cover it with a tight fitting lid and turn the heat down to low. This then needs to cook for 45 minutes and when the time is up your dolma will be ready. After 45 minutes, you can remove the lid and allow any excess liquid to boil away, 
though it's not uncommon to have a bit of a sauce with Iraqi dolma. When you're satisfied, bring it off the stove and allow it to cool for 10 minutes. Now comes the essential task of flipping the dolma. Place a large tray or platter on top of the pot. Grip the tray and the pot firmly with both hands before quickly flipping it over. Don't hesitate when doing this and the flip will turn out fine. I let it sit for about 5 minutes so that everything can fall into place before I went for the reveal. I'd recommend removing the pot slowly and then just put anything back into place that rolls away. Just look how beautiful this dolma turned out with its many flavours and colours. You really don't need to do 6 different types of dolma or spend all day to get a great result. And in truth you could probably put this dish together in about an hour. If you have any leftover dolma mix, you can cook it in a pot just like rice for a deconstructed dolma meal. There's so much to taste with all the different vegetables, but I'm a big fan of the onions, aubergines and the stuffed leaves, so those are the ones that I'm going to be tasting today. Let's see how they turned out. There's just an explosion of flavours going off in my mouth right now. The tangy glaze has reduced and is coating the dolma in a delicious layer of sour syrup. All the vegetables have the same filling, but my favourite one is the stuffed onions. They have caramelised nicely and their sweetness complements the tangy glaze perfectly. Although I'm usually not a fan of Swiss chard, both it and the vine leaves have turned out really tangy and tasty. Therefore, this dish has received a tangang seal of approval. Whatever combination of vegetables you choose to make, I'm sure you'll really enjoy this dolma. Like I mentioned, this will turn out amazing if you add a layer of lamb chops at the bottom. I hope you give this one a try soon and let me know how it turns out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like or comment and share it with your friends. And if you make this, be sure to send me some photos. As usual, the full recipe is in the description box down below and I'll be back next week with another recipe.